Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 4th meeting of the Water and Sewer Commission. So I think to start us off today, we will go over the, right? Welcome, welcome, coming. Okay, uh, so we welcome you all to the meeting, and then we will do any public comment. Does anyone have a public comment? Apparently not. Oh, cool. Yes, and then any additions, corrections? Okay. Any additions, deletions, or modifications to the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, we will move on to the approval of minutes, purchase orders, and warrants. <clears throat> so let's start with the minutes from the last meeting. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting. That's written. This is Jay, I will second. All right. Does anyone have any comments on me minutes from last meeting? No. Hearing none, we'll call it to a vote. Jay, aye. Lisa, aye. Aaron, aye. So next we will go over our purchase orders. We don't have any this week. Okay, so we will move right on to the warrants. Madam Chairperson, I move we accept the warrants as presented. I'll second. We Okay. Do we have to individually no. talk about them? We're good. All the warrants at once is good. All right. So bearing no further questions on the warrant, do we have a vote? Jay, aye. Okay. Aaron, aye. All right. So moving on to our scheduled agenda. Our first thing to do tonight is to consider the approval of finer what final water and sewer allocation for 83 Huntington Road. And there is information about this mm -hmm. in our pack. And we have a Bresser here too. We do. Uh, well, this is but not- This, this is not, not Bresser. This oh, isn't- yeah, This is Stone Corral. This is, oh, Stone Corral, sorry, yeah. you're right. So preliminary was approved at the last meeting and they're just coming back for final allocation for 1,620 gallons of water per day and 1,455 gallons of sewer. Uh, it's a total of $9,478.35, and I have checks from them in the office. So as soon as it's approved, we'll deposit the checks, and they'll be all set to go. So do we have any further Anything else to questions or any discussion of that? Steve, do you have any? No, I'm, I right? mean, I, I think this is one of the things that's been out there hanging in La La Land. Yeah that needed to get done. I mean, I think it's, you know, originally uh, past superintendent had given them originally a, a pretty good shot allocation, but what they needed be. was to correct it for the state mm -hmm. because the state was looking at them saying, you've got, you know, all these extra seatings now, you, you know, you need to go to the town and get this straightened out. So I, I mean, I'm good with it. Okay. okay. Madam Chairperson, I move to approve the following water and sewer, final water and sewer allocations for 83 Huntington Road, 1,620 gallons per day for water, bringing the total water allocation to 3,532 gallons per day, and 1,455 gallons per day for sewer, bringing the total sewer allocation to 2,975 gallons per day. I will second, Lisa. All right, so if we could call to a vote, Jay, I. Lisa, I. Aaron, I. <clears throat> Excellent. All right. So the next item on our agenda is the consideration of approval of a policy and amendment for our current policy, which would, well, approval of a policy and the amendment of a cur current policy, which would limit each structure to only one town water meter. Ready. Yours, it's already been approved. Oh, so I'm good. If you're, here for, oh, wow. if you're just here for that, it's over. <laughs> we all set. You guys got checks. Yeah. We're all good. We're good to go. Okay. I stopped by to see you last Friday. I heard, and I apologize, uh, no, and I will no. discuss with you later. Yep. Hi, bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you want me to read the description, or do you read the description? Uh, don't you have it so you could I put it? Whatever you like. <laughs> um. So in our packet, there is a draft of the amended policy and a draft of the new policy. Um, 
Well, it's in your voice. Josh added the purpose <laughs> statement that was discussed at the last meeting to the beginning of the new policy. While reviewing the policies with the superintendent, Mr. Steve Cody, we realize that we do not have anything in writing that states that the billing rate for metered usage of water and wastewater when a structure has both residential and commercial uses. That sentence is a little clunky. Yeah, um, um, we added the following line to the policy controlling the number of water meters per structure. When a structure has both commercial and residential fixed costs, the metered slash usage rates shall be billed at the commercial metered and usage rate. So, so if we have a structure where there's a couple of apartments and some commercial property, we have one meter, all of the residential will be metered at the commercial rate is we're, basically what we're saying. That's the current practice. We just realized that it wasn't we actually- just won't have it in writing. Mm -hmm. and, and I will again state that this policy is greatly needed because um, a couple of weeks ago, we ran into an incident where we had uh, a water leak on a service line servicing so we had one curb stop servicing two buildings and two com and in those buildings there were six commercial properties commercial entities so we had to shut them off because of the leak until they fixed it it was their problem but we had to shut i A mean a lot of yeah <laughs> So in discussing that with them, um, they didn't have the time and, and where to correct it now, but next spring, we're going to tap a separate line. They're going to tap a separate line for one of the buildings and disconnect from the T. So they will end up with two, two curbs, two curb stops for two of the buildings. So they have to shut off again at least one more time. Huh? They'll have to be shut off again. Yeah, I mean, but they know that, I mean, and they're going to plan it. So um, they they thought that was something that they would work on next spring, mm -hmm. and and I told them that would be a good good thing to do. How long were they shut off? Yeah. Well, they were shut off from about four thirty until noon the next day when they got it fixed okay so it wasn't but, a few minutes it was... yeah and it was a friday night into saturday mm -hmm. they got it fixed on a saturday um but still that just goes to show not having a policy you end up with two commercial two commercial buildings with one curb stop mm -hmm. two meters they probably never thought about it well i'm sure they did how did they um Sure but with the policy stating that we have the ability to say, oops, sorry, you, you need to put in a curb stop mm -hmm. for this building. Okay. But that would only apply at the beginning. Right. They, they, Going forward. If they already, because we said in this, if you've already right. got multiple meters on one curb stop, but you keep it. In discussing it with these two, they both were of the thought that, hey, that's probably the right way to go. Make the right choice, yeah. Yeah, so like we said, we added the purpose statement that Bard helped me write, and then we uh, mm -hmm. added the thing about billing. Other than that, I don't think we made any changes to this policy. And then the other policy, um, again, no changes here, and we changed the uh, presenter to preventer, as Aaron called out at last meeting. Yeah, I think you covered all the options. I mean, they're clear. Hopefully. Um, it's one page. Sure. Couldn't be better. Gary? So um, this is what I came for because I didn't really understand what's going on. So uh, say I want to build a duplex, which I'm thinking about doing. Can I still have two curb stops, one to each unit? Which is... if, if you want to build a duplex and you want to have two separate meters yeah. with two curb stops, Yes. Okay. Because in that it it says that. I mean. I mean. Is it clear that, that I can do that? Because 
We added that statement where it says. Yeah, so right here, if each structure that is serviced by the Richard Water Resources Department shall have only one town meter and one, one meter per service line. If the building owner seeks to have multiple town water meters, then a water meter service line for each meter must be constructed at the building owner's expense from the water main to the building. So it allows you to have okay. two lines. So again, that's exactly for the reason of a duplex. But isn't it, if if you have one meter, it's still constructed at the building owner's expense, right? Yeah, we just yeah, wanted yeah. to be clear. So that what's it, what's that language actually saying then? What? We're, we're not preventing you from putting two lines in for a duplex yeah. into one structure. Okay. Um, it's like if you own a commercial building and you wanted it, if you had two commercial uh, um, entities there, mm -hmm. ideally, we would like you to have two curb stops. Yeah. Um, what, because, it's, what it's preventing you from doing... But we can't force anybody who is currently that way from changing, but we would like the policy going forward to okay. be that way. What it's preventing you from doing is putting one water line with one curb stop to your duplex and having the water meters on the inside separated, separated okay. because then if they had to shut the water off because one of your duplex people wasn't paying, right now they'd have to shut both of them off. Yep. So it's just avoiding the, okay. if there's multiple service not having multiple services per line. So if you did have to shut something off, you right. wouldn't have to shut both people off. We, ha we, we have in town even triplexes that have one curb stop. So if we have, and they have three meters inside, it splits off. Yeah. So we have, if, if a customer in that triplex doesn't pay their water bill, we have no ability to shut them off because we can't turn the curb stop off because the other two people are paying. And that's where the policy going forward is one curb stop, one meter, unless you have like a duplex or. Or if the person who owns the duplex is billing his people, you know, if he's just paying it and he's not, it's just part of the rent or something. You know, if you're not keeping the two distinct, if you just say your rent includes water and then you don't need to, we don't need to, because at that point, we're just going against the landlord. But if they're separate, it's basically one account, one meter is what we're going for. Right. Yeah. Good. Good. And if someone wants to put in just the one curb stop, they can put as many meters in once it's past the curb stop as they want. So they can say, you know, we're charging Gary and Jean for their water and we're charging Steve for his water and they mm -hmm. can split it up however they want after the town. But that's on their billing their responsibility their yeah they're and under no circumstances do those their meters overrule the town meters and that addition was more put in to grandfather people that already have one Multiple curb stop meters. but want to be able to you know like the places on bridge street that have a business downstairs and then four units upstairs they can choose to put that in past our curb stop Past our meter. Right. Past our meter. But yes. that's on them at that that's point. That's on yep. them to figure out how they're divvying it up. And they're only paying us for the one town meter. Right. Perfect. I just didn't understand it from we're just we're just trying to make it so that I mean, in <clears throat> in my research of this, most other towns, it is one curb stop per structure. Um commercial units, it's usually one curb stop per commercial build business. So even in, in other towns, even if it's a duplex, they have one meter. No, they some some towns will yet. Yeah, well, some towns allow a duplex one meter, or they will have two lines like you requested with two curb stops. Because you can, the town allows you to sell each unit separately to different people. Correct. And therein lies the problem yeah. because if you have one curb stop per the duplex and you sell one side and then the other side doesn't pay their bill, yeah. you we as the town can't shut that water off. You know, I'm wondering, and I hate to keep dragging this policy out, but well, I am well, like we no, talked about. No, because it's bringing up a good point. If you've got a duplex that has one owner, 
then you can have one meter and that's fine because they're going to then build their, their tenants separately. Right. But should we mandate that if you if the duplex has two owners, it needs to have two curb stops? Well, because if it because yeah. if it only I mean, has we the talked curb, about that. Right? If it only has the one curb stop and Gary pays, but you don't, I can't shut you right. And that's shut Gary off if there's only one. So maybe and, if, it, if, it, if ownership splits, maybe we put that in there that you have to have a double. I mean, curb we stop. talked about that in um, in the event that there were like four condos. Yeah, and but it, doesn't it come down to the idea of one curb stop, one account? Well, but. If it's one curb stop, one account, and Gary owns a duplex, and you two are renters, that works. Well, yes, if Gary, but that's part of my rent and oh, I'm but, paying to Gary. But, 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 then, but then if you buy your unit and Steve buys his unit, Gary's out of the picture, there's still the one. Then we're going to need to put another curb stop. Right. So right. that's what I'm wondering. Do we need to, like, since this is more about structures, do we say if a structure has two owners? I, uh, we talked about this already. If we already we, so we not, here's I, my and, question. It's, so Gary builds the units and he's planning to be the owner of the two duplexes mm -hmm. in 10 years. I buy them from Gary. So contingent to me buying them, you're going to make me dig up the yard. No, because, uh, you're buying. Are you, you buying buy one both. or are you buying both? I'm buying one. My yeah. brain hurts. So I feel like that's where it's starting. See, to this get is really a rabbit gray, hole like, where yeah. it I'm we're, we have scratched the surface trying to get it a policy here, and it is a bigger problem to try There's to no think all these yeah. things out. There's no solution that's going to work perfectly because telling somebody who fully intends to own both halves of the duplex and bill his tenants, telling him he has to put in two curb stops, it's like, why? But on the other hand, how do you then avoid him selling it to not you specifically, but anybody yeah. saying, I split them pot and we're having to dig up and put in another curb stock? There's no perfect solution that fixes both. Yeah. There just we, isn't. You know, we could accept a signed statement from the owner if they want to rent that's the building to two or more. Well, yeah, if the owner sells and they're the, responsible the, for paying all of this. The yeah. renting is fine. If, if the owner, we have to basically sell like, each If he sells, he has to have yeah, another curb stop. Yeah, I think that's where we is. It, 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 yeah. That's where we is. That's where we're at, is that if you sell it, you then would have to say, okay, someone's got to pay for that extra curb stop because we can't have one account that services two different owners. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I see no way around that. Do we need well, to the other kind thing, of go back and add that in? Probably. Yeah, the first step might be that if you're building a new duplex, you have to put two in. Because if you're doing one, it's not a big deal to put another curb stop no, next to it while you're building. I think that's at the owner's discretion, though, right? If they're like, I'm going to build this and I'm going to rent it out for the next 30 years, I only want to put one curb stop in. And then in 10 years, they sell, mm -hmm. then it's on them to build another curb stop. But that's a good, they would make that choice. And I think you would make the choice to put two curb stops in because, yeah, because when you're building it, it's, it's cheaper. It's a few hundred dollars to add. Yeah, right. right. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we should maybe add that to the policy and come back for a fifth or sixth bite at the apple. <laughs> I, I think I think it's worthy of putting in there though. Yeah. Okay. It does seem like it ultimately should be a choice of the owner. It's their money. Yeah. But well, it's I think it's a choice. But we have understand. to make that the owner yeah. can make that choice. But yeah. we have to say as long as they understand. If it, the owner understands that if you sell the halves of the duplex, you have to have a curb stop per unit. That's right. And that's just how you address that and when is up to you, mm -hmm. but you've got to do it. So how and I'm asking this because I don't know. So what happens if someone is, I don't even know what they're building, but someone's building something like kind of what's on Bridge Street that they have like a retail space, retail at the bottom, then they have two apartments up above that they're going to rent Airbnb, whatever the heck it is that they're doing. So how do you want to do next to the old funeral? Okay. So how does that work with right. that new construction? Because in theory, you probably would never sell just the apartments. Well, what does Jelena in the court do? I don't know. That's like, yeah. Separate meters for each, each unit? Jelena court. Jelena court. Or is that just part of their rent? You mean butter? Well, so I think, yes, I yes, think yes. in your scenario. They have one meter. And I think okay, in your so scenario, we've already, already got like. So if they ever some started selling the units. They, they, I believe they have one meter. They have one meter from the town. I know they do. Mm -hmm. But they have their own internal meters that mm -hmm. they take care of. Okay. And most of the upper block, like Sweet Simone's has one meter mm -hmm. and beyond that they they service suite simones and three apartments well they've serviced two commercial 
Okay. And six apartments on one if town you, meter. on one town meter. But, but there's one owner of all those apartments, right? Of, those, of that building and all those units. And that's so kind of where this started. Yes, was. but I guess what I was wondering was like, so what happens if someone's building a new construction? Like, I mean, technically they could sell the apartments, but keep their business. And so and that's then, where how in that new construction, work? that's what we're we're going for here. Would that be considered like a duplex that if it was new construction, they should put a we line would, and a curb? When they come for their allocations, yeah. we would strongly encourage them to put a meter in for the commercial. I mean, in yeah. in my thoughts, and a meter in for the residential side. Okay. But no, but I don't think that we could if they're planning to own the entire building. Because right now we're saying one owner, one building, one yeah. meter. But if they if they say Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna own the downstairs, but somebody else is gonna own the apartment upstairs. Right. Then, then we, they have to be two right. meters. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Because like I think they have to make the decision at the beginning, and if it's one owner, one building, it's one curb stop. And then if in five years it changes because they sell the apartment, then they need two curb stops. Yes. But we would put that forward at the beginning. In the beginning, so they are well aware of it. I get, and I guess they could have the curb stop dug and just not have a meter on it. Until they could write that way, the excavation's done. Like Gary said, That's yeah, Gary said yeah. Yeah. but like Gary said, if you're doing new construction, yeah, it, it's like you've already got the trench. Yeah. Mm. You don't want but, to dig up your own. No, line. you're right. <laughs> put it in, put it in, cap it, and then and then hook it up later on when you need it. Does that make, sure. that make sense? I mean, I think you've got a couple of curb yeah. stops that way, don't you? Yeah. yeah, no, I didn't. But is it yeah. the same for you? Have, you have a curb stop on buildings, not just or maybe you've used it now. I think with the owners on Peaceable Kingdom, isn't there one? Especially, but it doesn't have anything attached to it. Well, and that's why I was asking that because I mean, like, and you put it don't in know what people yeah, are because gonna... you're just digging, like, right? Yeah. I mean, so a footer of dog and everything. Yeah, but it's yeah. All right, you know, someone's building their building. Yeah, please, yeah. Yeah. Let's absolutely, let's Gary. Out before we had go rewrite it. I mean, time. that's why we're trying to make yeah. this policy. Mm -hmm. So going forward, the, the town is protected for the ability to shut people off if yeah. we have to for, fa for yeah, failure yeah. to pay. Plus, but, we're not looking to install. 10 meters into one structure right. also. Is there a big difference in rates for residential and commercial? Um, yes. Commercial is the cheapest rate out there, oh, I believe. The okay. metered rate. The, the, meter, the, the volume's a lot higher, right? The volume. Usually. Yeah. The fixed rate is much different for the commercial versus residential. And I believe the residential unit price is higher, but generally they're using substantially less. Right. Here we go. I'll get it for you right now. Jesus. I um, think we've looked this up. Yeah. I just the mixed yeah. rate, then who's getting the, if you're charging just the commercial rate for residential and commercial mix? Uh, one meter? Isn't that so, what you said earlier? So it, if you have two commercial units, and six residential units. Yeah. You're paying fixed costs on six residents and fixed costs on two commercial. But the metered rate is always commercial. But is that higher? Who's getting the deal? Well, it's the commercial rate right now is eleven sixty-eight for water and twelve fifty-seven for water for residential. So we're actually Billing at the lower amount, I guess, so we're not overbilling the commercial. Right. So and the residents, those residences are getting a break compared to the less, the yep. rest of the residents, which isn't really fair. I mean, it, it, it always hasn't been that way. It just happens right now our commercial rate is lower. I see. So sometimes the commercial rate yeah, has okay. been higher in the past. Is it? I don't know the really history. <laughs> Okay. I'm looking at it. I think where's the sewer? I mean, that has been that has been kind of the standard of what has been happening here. Yeah. I mean, I, we didn't change that. Yeah. We just put it into writing so we have it down as what is happening. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like the the places on Bridge Street, we've seen some sample bills from them, but so they get billed for their each of their units has the fixed rate for the residential and then the fixed rate for the commercial because they only have one meter they get the commercial rate 
for all of it. And it is my understanding that they just bill the water as like part of their rent. So whatever right. the rent is, if the rent's $1,200 a month, that includes water That's because true. the landlords... So okay. they're not breaking it down. I think there's other rental buildings that break it down and say like, Gary used a thousand gallons, Steve used 2000 gallons, but on those, they just do a flat rate for their, cause they don't, there's no breakdown of which unit used what right. yeah. amount. Okay. But yeah, we are billing the metered rate lower than we would for a standalone apartment. So, mm -hmm. but I don't really know if there's, that's another it, one of those In rules. general, they use, Let's they tend to ways. use more, water in the commercial than they do in the oh, that's a good point too and i mean and that's why it was always paced that way yeah makes sense you know they uh, the restaurant tends to use a lot more water mm -hmm. um and, and then your residential units upstairs Improves and that's why i believe in the past it was always billed at the commercial rate mm -hmm. The commercial meter drink. So, Josh, do we kick this down the road or not? Yeah, I think so. I want to add something in there about <laughs> if if the duplex corners, you need to have two curb stops because I think that yes. makes that makes sense. Yeah. And then, and it sounds kind owners. of like any multiple unit, really. Yeah, it, it, it should be not just duplex. Yeah. If there's separate areas, yeah, and it's not just like Gary and I own a building together. It's I own one side of the building, Gary owns the other side. Mm -hmm. Whether that's an accounting firm or a whatever um yeah okay I'll, I'll i'll add that and we'll we'll discuss it again and find more issues in two weeks <laughs> no thank you gary that was, that, yeah, no is that i mean that's rather, why we i'd rather have it in there because like right and have to change so another so no, that's not, that's there's right. two really different i mean not everybody has a forethought of putting another. curb stops Super. in when you yes. you know what i'm saying yeah. and okay. but okay. i want to be able to say if you even think you're going to divide this or sell this building, you should put two yeah. in. Give them that option right up front. Well, thank you. All right. All right. Thank thanks. You, Gary. Gary. So moving on, we're on our next item, which is to review our monthly water data from October of 2024. Steve, put this up, like Josh. The floor? Yeah, I'll show you. I'll tell you what's happening. Um, did something explode? Uh, um, no, I will explain it i'm and i apologize i i wanted to explain it two weeks ago but but you were you, you would not you want to be here yeah <laughs> so as you can see there's some data missing from this so could you make that a whole lot bigger and then that is the water produced so what happened was we approved the mission system the cellular base system that we were going to have installed. Mm -hmm. The company made arrangements to come and start their installation of it. I assured them, they assured me that they were not, they were just installing the units. They weren't hooking them to anything in our system. They were not going to interrupt any problems with our system. So, what happened was in their setup, their installation, they were into one of our boxes at the Waterhouse with what is the total number. It's a, it's a flow meter that calculates the total number of uh, processed water that we make in a day. So... The the meter is blank. It was blank when I came there. There was no communication from them. So I frantically called around, got a hold of them that night. They said that their tech had been in there. There was an issue. He was going to come back the next day and try to figure out what had happened to it. Um immediately I notified the state that there was an issue with our total because that is a required number that we have to post to the state. The state's response was, okay, stuff happens, things break. Do not put any numbers there. If there is no number showing, leave it blank. 
And I don't know, did you include the email? Yeah. So we have the email chain and stuff where we contacted the state and, and that was what they said. So during my being sick, I missed a little bit with the with them and I got in contact with them as soon as I got back last week. Their champlain told me that they cannot get the part that they need to replace it till the 19th of this month. It has been ordered. So they we contacted the state, made them aware. They were like, leave it blank. We, you know, don't put anything in it. Um, so that's what we've been doing. Um, the one thing that I will say is in my infinite wisdom of finally figuring out and looking, we have a total number of gallons produced by our raw water. Mm -hmm. That is different from our production water. Um, but that totaler is still working. So on the first of the month, um, we took we took some totals of that for a few days. And then we saw that the gallons produced were like maybe four or 5,000 gallons off from what the raw water was for a day. So uh, we contacted the state again. So starting on the 1st of uh, November, we are using our raw water number. So there will be a number there for um, November. It will be a different number, but it is the total number of gallons produced is going to be relatively close. And the state said, that's fine until you get the other one fixed. So long and short, we're trying to make it better. The company messed up, and that's why the data is not there. But we've been totally open. I told Josh the same day it happened. And like I said, if you look at the email chain, the same day, the 11th, we notified the state, and, and we did everything that they had asked us. So everybody's aware of it. I don't, I'm, it I'm not impressed that this happened. Um, but there's no contractual there was, penalty for... No. Not what whatsoever. So your chlorine and pH and so forth are separate from that. Oh yeah, yeah. This is just the flow meter for production. Mm -hmm. All the other numbers are still um, on there, and everything is is you know pretty rock solid. And you explained to me that those pumps add fluoride and chlorine based on a different measurement than the flow the meter. Right. That flow meter is based on uh -huh. what is mixed in the clear well. Mm -hmm. The raw water is what meters the chlorine and the fluoride in. So when the raw water pump is pumping, the chlorine and the fluoride are pumping in at the metered mm -hmm. rates that we have already preset. So that's where... Well, that's where the numbers come. And then later you test the levels to make sure it's... Yeah. 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 And the levels for chlorine and fluoride are, again, all within the acceptable range. Yeah. Or, or the target range, I should say. Yeah. So yep. I think, um, yeah, you guys continue to, to knock that out of the park, even with a meter hiccup. Okay. Yeah. Do we right. definitely need an interesting hiccup? Is that, do we even need a meter? Well, you do. It's, it's required it's, by it's the required, state. Yeah. Um, yeah. They don't know how good they, it is. Like. They will allow us to use the raw water, mm -hmm. but it is... It is not, they want to know the total production mm -hmm. water that we're putting into the system and, in a day. And and the raw water could differ mm -hmm. because at some point the clear well, our clear well holds about 4,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be full, not have to pump out, mm -hmm. but the raw water meter will account for that, mm -hmm. whereas the production meter wouldn't. So they want to know after how much was actually put in the system that day, not how much was produced from the well. Interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I didn't really understand yeah. that distinction until just now. But they will allow, in my wisdom, after looking at the meters, you know, and being frustrated, uh, I was like, wait a minute. This meter's given us the number of gallons. It's yeah. pretty close to what we usually are producing. Yeah, cool. So we called the state or we emailed them. Good thought. And, and they said, yeah, hey, you can use that, but you know, get the other one fixed. 
because that's the one we want. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, thank but you. We're on it. Yeah. We just want everybody to be aware of why those numbers aren't there. Thank you very much. Okay. So the next thing is an update on the installation of water meters. The staff has installed 130 water meters of a total of 350. The process has been slow as Cody has been sick and the staff has been busy with tasks to prepare for winter. They are expecting installations to increase once winter preparations are completed. That seems yeah, pretty we're, reasonable. We're getting back onto um, that. And um, I think I think we're up like at 135. We've, we, we've been just... they. When I was sick, I didn't ask them to do anything more than Absolutely. do extra work that we needed to do for winter that was planned. Um, but now that I'm back, we're trying to get into the swing and get back into the meter thing. I'd like, ideally, both Brad and I would like to see a, a between 120 and 130 meters each quarter. And that would put us in like three quarters and out and you know, we'd yeah. be less than a year. We'd have them all done. Well, and it is important to do the winter prep. So we appreciate yeah. you doing that first. Do you want to talk about Connie and the bills? Uh, yeah. And we have a, a new update from today as well. So let me get oh, to yeah. that. Um, okay. Let me share this. So you'll get a pink slip in your bill. You did not get a piece. No. I don't have a bill. It's not you. Bill. It was Morgan's. Um, where did I pull this out of? All right. Kind of move all my various things around here. Okay. So initially, um, I'll get to this in a second. So usually we send out bills right after the quarter closes. So for July, August, September, we'd send them out the first week. In October, we should try to have them out by October 10th. Because we started to install the new meters in that quarter, um, we had instances where there was a reading from the old meter and then a reading from the new meter. Mm -hmm. Connie still needed training on how do we make that switch with the diff different types of meters. That took a little bit of time. So she's got all the bills out last week with a few that had to actually be physically mailed today. So she crunched through it last week. We put out information on Front Porch Forum. Um, and we talked about it in this commission meeting a few times so that people know that's why it's going to be late. Um, but then, so she got it all out last week, which is great. Then today, Steve came to me with a, a question on the bill. So as you look at the bill, um, it does get a little confusing. And some of this is exciting. So you've got your meter reading. You got your current as of 10 one twenty four shows 145,348. Then the previous at 8 seven twenty four shows negative 115,200. Oh. And then this is a, a, a handwritten that, mark. That so the, the, the total usage is 260. So I think when you first look at this, you go 145 minus 115 equals 260. <laughs> no. What am I getting here? So what we did was we we, we went in. It, it, it's correct. It just needs ex explaining. Mm -hmm. So we created this document here that we are going to tip into all the people that have new meters. So your property received a new meter during this past quarter, July through September. Due to installing the new meter mid-quarter, the water billing software created a bill to create some explanation. So under current, that shows the gallons used as measured by the new meter from the day it was installed through September 30th. So that's your current reading. That's the new meter. Previous is the gallons used as metered by the previous water meter from July 1, 2024 till the day it was replaced. This is expressed as a negative number. So that's your negative 115. So the way the system calculates usage, usage is the total gallons used as measured by both meters. The software is set up to subtract previous from the current. So you can imagine if you had a regular meter that was at 10,000, you use 25,000, it's 25 minus 10 gets you to 15, but we didn't have a, a starting point for this one. Mm -hmm. So what we said was um, you have to subtract the previous from the current. So um, and so the current has to be expressed as a negative number. For instance, if you would use 2,000 gallons with the old meter, that's the previous, and 3,000 gallons with the new meter, that's your current, mm -hmm. the software uses a formula of the um, current, 3,000, minus a negative 2,000, which is your previous, to get to 5,000. Mm -hmm. So it's basically saying the net difference. So hopefully this is explaining it. Then your service charge days is only showing the days the new meter was in service. So in this account, the new meter was in service for 55 days. 
all bills going forward for this account and any other account that has a new meter will look the same because your previous will, will look as you normally would see it. So now your current will start at one, uh, your previous will start at 145. Yeah, and your current will be whatever the reading is at the end of December. Mm -hmm. You subtract those two and you get your usage and it'll be a 90 to 93 day period. So, so they build every three months. Yes, every yeah, three months. Well, yeah. And we just tried to explain that negative number because otherwise you can usually just say, okay, current minus previous equals my usage. And in this case, it's sort of if you did that, you would get 260. But the negative, I think, throws people off because it took me and him a minute to go, oh yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put this. We unfortunately were there was about oh a hundred bills that were already mailed. Yeah. We caught 25 of them today that hadn't been mailed. So we're going to put a pink slip in there. And my pink, it's, it's going to be in pink paper so people see it. That's basically it. this. It's this exact thing. Yeah. The same paper you use if you forget to pay your bill? Yeah, kind of. Oh, that's what it sounds like. Pink slip. Well, that's then, what I pink I, I, I like, pink I and I had blue. And then, and then we'll put it on front porch form and on the website as well so that yeah. if anybody has any questions, because we didn't catch everybody, we're, unfortunately. Yeah, we were, we were just we trying to make it easier on Connie and Linda that look at getting a lot of phone calls yeah. and put an Somebody explanation. Ask, there. but there's the answer, sir. Um, so hopefully this is clear enough. It, this, <laughs> more clear this, than it would be if you didn't have an explanation. The, Less unclear. So, so going forward, if you already have a Zener meter, that billing will be done. Basically, Connie will download this six days before the the end of the quarter. She will download the the billing into the Zener meter thing. Zenner will populate it, yeah. and at the end of six days, at the at the first of whatever, she can then upload these. And billing is already done. Mm -hmm. There's no need to go read meters, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we went to this system. It's definitely going to save hours of your time and hours of Connie's yeah. time every every three months. That almost ought to come up at the the budget meeting. In yeah. the sense of this is labor savings. Yeah. Instead of people copying numbers all day, yeah, we got them doing more important stuff. And numbers. without having to dance the hokey pokey, yeah, yeah. no, no yeah. Hokey yeah. Pokey, which I enjoy, but yeah, progress, and, progress, and which I the, the nice thing is there, the numbers mm -hmm. are the numbers. There are no, yeah, there are no typos. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, there are no typos. There's nobody involved. It is a download of a system into a system and then upload, and it's done. Yeah. Um, there are really is, there are no human interaction. What's she gonna do with her spare time? Well, she still has to print all the bills, oh, get okay. the bills stuff, get them out. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty. Of, yeah. But you're right; it does save her a couple hours. That's kind of tedious. Too. Yeah, and it saves these guys hours too. It saves, because, mostly, it's going to save us hours. Like two because, days of driving around. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's oh. driving around. Yeah. We have to physically go to every account, read every meter, right. and then then we have to spend two to three hours with Connie reading the numbers off to her. Oh, Don't you think she'll get lonely? I well, I, I you can visit, but uh, I think we'll find ways to fill the time. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, well, in order anyway, to keep on task, let's move uh, on. Yeah. Thank you for the update. Um, okay, so we have the superintendent's report left and the update on the repair of the sewer line on Bridge Street. So roll those all into one, I think. And or let's just do the sewer line and then go to yeah. yeah. So the sewer line under under the bridge, uh, the hangers have been repaired. They it looks great. Um, if you are walking on the sidewalk and you look there, the um, there is some exposed um, insulation hanging off. Um, I apologize if if I hadn't been sick, um, I would have been more on top of watching what was done. Basically, they they in they put the tin around the uh, sewer line where it had been removed, and then they injected um, expand a foam in through holes well some of that expand of foam came back out through the holes yeah, yeah. they didn't cut it off with a knife so it's you have spaghetti. you know you have some big chunks that look uh, it's kind of an eyesore but the staging is all gone but we can leave it like that definitely yeah or we can send josh's kids out with a as i say oh, there's plenty of people to take care of that 
Okay. Um, but the work, like, the, the work of the hangers looks really well. I feel that the insulation is in place. Um, could they have done a little neater job and made it look a little better? Yes, but it, it is what it is. It it's in place until the next flood, which is ready have that scheduled December. Mm. December. Let's just I don't know here. So we had a little league day on Saturday, and we prepared as if the flood is imminent. So we got everything out of the park, <laughs> which is, ensures that when you bring a rain jacket, it doesn't rain, right? Oh, yeah. So we 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 think we we think we we put a jinx on the flood to keep it out by doing Whoa. all the work. If that works. You're well, really good at something. That works. I'm going to sell my services. I will say the tractor is still parked there, though. Harlan's going to take care of that this oh, week. Boy. We're getting yeah. it out of the way. Trust the me. The shed goes this weekend, so we'll be it. We'll be that too. You're out the in shed the field. Moving. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. You're, you're, you're shed. Shed. Okay. I'm the superintendent's no, report. Support. Basically, um, I've been sick, but we've been progressing. Um, Do you want us to tell you the bullet points you're supposed to be telling us about? Uh, sure. So can. the first thing is the repairs to the clarifier. Yes. So I have had a new shaft. The clarifier has been down for six or seven months. Um, I ultimately came up with a plan that is relatively inexpensive for us. Um, it's it's not going to be the twelve thousand dollars that we were looking at. Um, Basically, I had a completely new shaft built, 11 feet long, two and a half, seven eighths inches in diameter. Um, we've had new barons built. Um, right now, we're in the process of one of the, the, the ultimate cause of this was failure of a bolt that holds the bearings to the concrete. Um, I'm working with Holt Tanner and their uh, structural engineers. They don't make the type of anchors that were originally used anymore. So what we ultimately are going to do is epoxy in a, a bolt. Um, and I just got back today the information of the type of epoxy they want me to mm -hmm. use. So my next thing is to order it. It can install it. It's good at working temperature is 23 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees, so we can install it. It's made for water usage and stuff. So as um, soon as we get that installed, we're ready to put the shaft back in place and get the chain working. Once all that's good, we can the clarifier is good to go. Um, the other thing that we've been working on and the boys did when I was gone, um, and I'll give them kudos, they cleaned the aeration tank. Um, I had estimated it costing us $15,000. When I had it estimated last summer, they told me it was going to be $20,000. I said, no, I ain't doing that. Um, we worked diligently throughout the summer with five gallon pails and a rope pulling the stuff up. We did not get it all. We ended up spending, what is it, seven? About that. We ended up spending seven thousand dollars to clean it out. Um, so you're just hauling the crap out. One it is time. literally a sand and, and silt that would accumulated in the bottom of the a clear. Uh, okay. Yeah. So what we did is we used the vac truck. They used it for a day and a half. Mm -hmm. um, they sucked everything out of it. We have since washed it all down, mm -hmm. and it is ready right now to fill up. Um, as soon as we get the clarifier fixed, we can divert flow to the tank and fill it up so that it has effluent in it for winter so that it doesn't get damaged. Um, yeah. How so, much was in there? Did you have to? How much how what? Much, how much ships? I'm not filled. 24. They took out it with the VAC truck 24,000 pounds or 24 tons. And where did it? Who? It went to all seasons. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. And that's not counting what we pulled up on a weekly, we pulled up and put into the dumpster. Mm -hmm. um, so we made a dent in it, but yeah. we just, it was getting too close to winter. Mm -hmm. And when I was sick, I was like, do it. Mm -hmm. How deep of a layer do you think that it was? Be? It was roughly 18 to two feet deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a fair amount of capacity. 
Also, what I would like to talk about, and I think it's in the bullet points, is our nitrous our nitrification. Mm -hmm. um, so quarterly, we're required to take nitro nitrogen levels in our effluent. Um, in July, just before the flood, we took one of those quarterly samples and it was rock solid. The one that we took in October came back roughly 25, uh, 25 times higher. We are not in violation. There are no violations for nitrogen discharge at the current time on this side of the state. Mm -hmm. It is coming in 2027, I believe. That being said, I had a discussion with Nate Fredericks and Rural Water. And so when we changed aeration tanks, mm -hmm. When we changed aeration tanks, the nitrif the the nitrif fixing bacteria mm -hmm. are very very susceptible to change. Are these the same bacteria that are completely out of whack a few months back, or uh, just at the flood time? Yes. Okay. Well, they're they they were affected at that time. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> What we feel has happened was they, they're they out of whack. Everything else in the plant is running perfect. Our, our phosphorus removal is rock solid. Mm -hmm. So what we feel and the justification is that it takes a long time to get them back into... Okay, it's slow. It, yeah. And what also is hindering that is cooler weather slows it down yeah I was so say that. so we, what we're doing as a preventative measure is we're we're only required to do testing for it once a month I mean once a quarter but we are going to once a month testing on our own just so we know and can see mm -hmm. and we can say to the state look we saw there was a problem we immediately started testing for it Mm -hmm. and, and, we and we're trying to monitor what we can do to better make it better right. so sure. that that's my answer for that mm -hmm. um it happened because if you weren't doing that that's what they'd want to see well well that's what they would require us to do mm -hmm. but we're trying to be proactive we sure. we've seen there's an issue mm -hmm. we're trying to monitor ourselves and we're trying to correct it mm -hmm. but everything else in the plant is running great ever since we switched to the other aeration tank um everything has been rock solid uh it really has run That's really well good. um so i mean we're just looking at that slow growth for the nitrogen mm -hmm. fixing bacteria okay that's the plan anyway and if it you know if we take a test next month we'd like to see some better numbers and then, you know, if there's not, we're I'm definitely going to be making some more inquiries into what we can do to bring them back. pH and um, temperature affects them greatly. They're really the, they're the most finicky bacteria that we have to deal What are we paying them? Not much. <laughs> not much at all. It's a lot of them. Influent pump? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, the influent pump, I've got all the uh, designs from Holt Tanner. And um, I have a meeting on the 14th with the engineers. Um, Brad and I want to just discuss and make sure we're happy with their design. Um, so we're we're scheduled a meeting for that on the 14th. Okay. And then the next step is out to bid on that. And then as soon as we're comfortable with their proposal, it's ready to go to bid. Okay. PLC? Oh, yeah. PLC in the... And we've got... Like two minutes left. Huh? We've got like two minutes left. Yeah. So. The BLC, basically the brains for the septage receiving unit, mm -hmm. it's brain dead. So how old was it? Um, it was old in it was put in in the upgrade in 2020. Years. 2003. Oh. So. So we're not talking 1972. Okay. No. Huh. Problem is they don't make that logic any that logic. PLC anymore. Um, 
Is that the brain? Was this something we were looking at as part of the 20 year study anyway? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, um, but so in order to receive septage, it's requiring one person to man the septage unit basically all time because you have to physically turn it on when they start dumping, let it run. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you shut it off and you have to manually clean it. It doesn't run its cycles. It, it doesn't do anything. Um, it really is literally, it's got a fault in it and, and it doesn't even recognize when you plug in a laptop to it, it doesn't even recognize that there is a unit connected. That's how messed up it is. Well, that's so, suboptimal. Yeah. So we've, I, I got in contact with um, Dan Pratt, the electrician. He has a, acquired a comparable PLC that he can put in place. Problem is he's had to build the complete program from scratch. Um, and he has all of the information, but he has to physically put it in. It's going to be about five grand to get it back operable. But we're spending a lot of we're spending one man hour, one person all day doing that manning. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that in the month of November, the we took seven hundred and ten thousand gallons of septage. Okay, so let's items for next agenda. Two things: speed round items for next agenda. But I think an update on the PLC yeah. should be yeah. one of them. Yeah. And then our. Weekly dive at the um, meter policy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, is it bi weekly or weekly? Well, bi weekly. The meter policy and then the water meter installation. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. And I'm sure other things will come up. Madam Chairperson, I move we adjourn. All right. I will second. All right. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. This concludes the meeting of November 4th of the Water and Sewer Commission. Thank you.